weekend has finally rolled around. It's Friday, I just got off work. Spending a little bit of time in the truck camper is exactly what my body and soul needs to repair itself from this flu. A lot of you saw last weekend's community post about how I wasn't feeling well and I ended up missing a video. It's because of all your well wishes and prayers that I'm back in the truck camper this weekend. Quite relaxing weekend out in the woods, it's exactly what I need. This looks like the perfect home for the weekend. I rolled in here last night at about 5.45. I haven't heard anybody around. I think this woods is empty. This is quite a difference from last weekend. Check this out, right on the lake. In case you missed last Tuesday's community post, I'll fill you in and it all starts last Friday. I took off work, used four hours of vacation time so I could get an early jump on the weekend, get into the St. Croix State Forest. I got out there and what I was finding was occupied campgrounds, closed campgrounds, forest roads and minimum maintenance roads that were blocked off because we're kind of getting into that mud season a little early here in Minnesota. So I decided to jump up into the Maji State Forest, found the exact same thing. I decided I'm gonna go back by home, get into the Land of Lake State Forest where I know the roads are open. I know we get some dispersed campsites. I got in 1.30, 2 a.m., finally got to bed. When I woke up Saturday morning, oh, I was a mess. I was running a fever, sweating through my clothes, face was swollen up again, had some type of infection and virus going on, it's still congested in my chest, and I'm sure it all has something to do with that tooth that's been bothering me for a couple of weeks now. When I've been into the dentist, they drilled the tooth out, packed medication in there, put me on an antibiotic, and told me that they can't do anything until this infection's gone. So this weekend I decided, let's get in the camper. Let's have a relaxing weekend. Maybe make some chicken noodle soup for the soul because that'll make me feel better. This campground though, or dispersed campsite, this is a nice one. Well, this weekend I brought you up to Cass County, Minnesota. We're at a dispersed campsite that's got a fire pit and that's it. If you've been watching the channel long enough, then you know that I generally don't give out the location of these dispersed campsites. But I give you enough information that if you put two and two together, you'll easily find them. And if you do, you can help me clean this mess up. Another cooler donation for the channel. Wow, they really shot this one up. Some people ask me how I find these spots and they're not hard to find if you know what to look for. So in Minnesota, we have state land, we have national forest land, and then we have lands like this, tax forfeited lands. The cool thing about the tax forfeited land is they treat them just like state forests. You can disperse camp here for up to 14 days.
So if you live in Minnesota and don't get out camping as much as you'd like to because you don't have access to state or national forest, contact your county's local land and services department. See what they say about the tax forfeited lands. Cass County, Itasca County, Crow Wing County, the areas where I'm familiar with, they treat this all like state forest land. Same rules as far as dispersed camping goes. One thing to keep in mind though, just because you're at a boat landing doesn't mean you found a dispersed campsite. Take for example, Itasca County, they've got over 2,000 boat landings alone. As far as I can find, you're only allowed to disperse camp at about 15 of them. So make sure you look for those signs that say no camping. I've looked all over to find if this spot is listed as a dispersed campsite through the county and I found no record of it. The good news is there's no signs here saying I can't overnight. There's already an established campfire. Worst thing that could happen is the game warden stops by and tells you to move along. It's an awesome feeling knowing that you're the only person around for miles. Thought we'd go for a walk and see if we can find some down trees to bring back to the campsite, cut up for firewood. This might be a good piece right here. That'll work. We're gonna put them fire starters to the test. See how well they burn up full rounds. I'm not sure yet if the Dutch oven's gonna go on the fire, but I tell you what, looking forward to some big old dumplings. Look at this, we're getting some blue skies out here. It might be a nice night after all. I know a chainsaw would be quicker, but this is what I got for now, and it works. Make sure we don't have any live rounds in here. Clean enough. I've got one fast fire left, so we better make it work. I'm gonna start by burning some of this bark. Hopefully this works. Of course, this bark is super wet. I was gonna try and make a little bit of like a log cabin here with these rounds. But I'm gonna need to get that fire going. The best way to do it with the Fire Feeder 2000. Well, 
wet bark and full rounds, fast fires might have finally met their match. The good news is I've got a sock and a generator full of gas. I know I can get this thing going. We're not quite there yet though. Adding the dry wood definitely helped. I think it's time we get inside, start making supper. Tonight for supper, I'm gonna be making chicken noodle soup. And it's kinda of gonna be from scratch. We're gonna use a little bit of chicken stock though. First thing I'm gonna do is get some chicken thighs in the Dutch oven. They're a boneless, skinless chicken thigh. First, I gotta put a little bit of olive oil in the Dutch oven. While the chicken cooks, I'm gonna cut up the onions, celery, carrots, garlic. Check this chicken out. It's looking great. And I get to take all of this out and we're gonna saute up the vegetables. Three tablespoons of butter in the Dutch oven. Once that's melted down, in go the vegetables. Holy buckets, if you could smell it in here. This is awesome. And the nice thing about chicken noodle soup is it's not a science. I'm gonna throw some chicken stock in here. The chicken, we'll season it up with some salt and pepper, put some dumplings on top. It'll be awesome. Chicken noodle soup is so easy to make. We'll have to see how much chicken broth this takes. I think I got six cups with. We might get it done with four. While this cooks, I'm gonna get going on the dumplings in about 30 minutes. We'll add the noodles. One cup flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, one egg, two tablespoons of uh, olive oil. Almost forgot a quarter cup of milk, but all I have is half and half. And now we can mix it up. And that's about what it's gonna look like. Let's get the noodles in. I'm gonna be using some Miss Miller's old fashioned extra wide head noodles. Just remember, we don't want to put too many noodles in there. We still got to have room for the dumplings. Fifteen to twenty minutes, and supper will be done. I've been coming outside here to cool off in between cooking. I think all the steam inside is probably really good for the congestion. It's getting warm in there. I think it's 20, 
25, 26 degrees out right now. The wind just picked up out of nowhere though. It wasn't windy like 30 minutes ago. Tonight's supper is actually my mom's idea and it's a funny story. So on Monday, I called up my sister, she's a nurse, and I asked her if the amoxicillin that the dentist put me on would be enough to kick this flu bug that I got. She thought that everything would be fine. But what I didn't know was that my mom was visiting my sister at the time. So my sister told my mom how I wasn't feeling good. When I got home Monday night from work, I found out that my mom came over, brought me like six cans of chicken noodle soup and a box of saltine crackers. Moms will always be moms no matter how old their boys get. Well, I think it's probably time to go inside and check and see if that soup's ready. I was really hoping that the stars were gonna be out tonight, but no luck. It's like a day spa in here. Nice. Oh, that is gonna be good. Well, I'm gonna clean up the camper, have a bowl of soup, and then I gotta get to bed. It's amazing how time flies in the truck camper. There's nothing wrong with Campbell soup, but this here, this is a whole new level. There's no doubt I'll be sleeping good tonight. So nice not having to go outside and start a generator to make a coffee. 19 degrees. Beautiful out. One thing that I never realized until I started this channel was just so infrequently you get to hear the birds in the middle of winter. So this morning when I woke up, opened the door and heard all of the songs from the birds, the first thing I did is I ran out there, put a camera up so I could record their songs. The other thing that's been making a lot of noise is the lake. 
think I'm going to get out there and see if we can't capture some of the sounds of it. I saw something running across the lake too. I don't know if it was a ferret or a beaver, but maybe we'll go see if we can find that. It's times like these that I love the truck camper. Warm, cozy, cold outside. There's no worries about walking on the ice today. It's probably a foot thick or more. I have been seeing on some Facebook forums though that trucks are going down on Red Lake. I definitely wouldn't be driving the vehicle out here. Not this winter. If you look down at the cracks, you can tell that it's gotta be a foot thick. I didn't bring my fishing equipment with because I didn't think I'd be spending much time on the lake. But I got this new heated jacket and uh, the winds hit my back. My back is staying nice and warm. So Debbie, thank you very much for sending the jacket as a gift. Yeah, they definitely work. I should have brought some sunglasses. The sun's gone behind clouds, but it's still bright with the light bouncing off the snow. What in the world is that? Someone started a fire on the ice. You know, can you see the camper over there? We're a ways out. This is losing some fun walking back into the wind. Prior to going into the dentist the first time, the only thing that would make my tooth feel better is if I packed snow up in there. Now after they drilled it out and done some work, the only thing that'll make it feel better after getting cold air on it is to drink some warm coffee. Darn tooth. I'm gonna leave you some wood if you do decide to come out here. And then if you're wondering, how do you find tax forfeited lands? I use the Onyx app, but you can check with the land and services agency when you're there. Any plat map will show you who owns the property. I think we just about got this video in the bag. You guys have been hanging out with me all weekend long. That's definitely long enough. So we'll do this again next Tuesday. Until then, be kind, be honest. We'll see you down the road.